To find the UIS course schedule, go to the main UIS webpage, look under the heading Students for the link Registration. From here, scroll down and you'll see the link Course Schedules, followed by the link for Dynamic Course Schedules. Pick a semester, and you'll be at the search engine for classes. You can pick any subject you want, in this case accountancy. If you're interested specifically in online courses, look under Sessions and select Online. At this point, when you do a course search, you'll come up with every accounting course that happens to be online. There are two useful links for each course. First, click the name of the class. This will take you to a screen that tells you how many seats are available in that class, in this case, 40 seats. I'm recording this prior to the start of registration, so at this point no one is enrolled, but if there were, you'd see how many people were currently enrolled in that class, and you'd also see how many seats are still remaining in that class. This will help you determine if a class is full or not, so that you know whether it's worth your time to attempt to register in it. Not every course has a waitlist, but if it does, you'll see the number of waitlist seats listed here. In this case, this course has zero seats on a waitlist, so there is no waitlist. If you see that there is a waitlist and you see that the course is full, still try to register in the course because instead of going into the course, you'll be put onto the waitlist. And once you're on the waitlist, only those people are able to register in that course from that point forward. Another useful link, and this is possible to see here but also at the screen prior, is View Catalog Entry. If you click here, you'll actually be able to read a course description for each of the courses that you're interested in. Since liberal studies students are able to take classes in all areas, every semester we go through the schedule for you and we come up with a list of courses that are most likely going to be the ones liberal studies students are interested in. We don't list all courses though. Um, we don't list courses, for example, that have a lot of prerequisite courses. So for example, high level mathematics courses or computer science courses that the typical liberal studies student wouldn't take. We don't list graduate level courses. Um, although, in both cases, they might be courses that you personally could take, so possibly you happen to have the right background in math or computer science, or maybe there is a graduate level course that you have the skills and you could take. So if you are interested in courses you don't see here, please use the full schedule. In fact, you can see that I've listed a link directly to that schedule so you can get there. Every semester you're going to get an email to let you know that this web page exists, but it is, I should scroll back here, it is always linked on the main page of our website. We've put these classes into groups for you to help you kind of understand how um, you might interact with the various people on campus. So for example, group one courses are open to all students. These are classes that require no permission. You literally just enroll if you're interested in them. So these are the easiest ones to get into. Group two courses do require you to interact with campus and require you to get someone's permission to enroll. In this case, I've listed the courses and tried to list the person or the process you need to follow to get that permission. Group three courses are classes specifically for online majors that are restricted to specific online groups. So for example, you can see liberal studies as a group and all of these courses that are listed are reserved so that only liberal studies students can register in them. As you scroll down, you'll see that I'm also listing English and history and philosophy courses here as well. So as the registration cycle begins, you'll have access to all of the liberal studies restricted courses, but not to the English, history, and philosophy courses. We do try to work well together, so there will come a point in the near future, um, usually about a month into the registration cycle, where English, history, and philosophy courses that are reserved will be open to other online majors. So our goal is to share classes after we've met the needs of our, our programs. Um, if you're interested in these courses, please read these these little blurbs that I put there because it doesn't mean that you need to wait to ask to get into the class. So for example, in both the case of English and history, we want you to ask permission immediately so that we can have that list of people waiting so that when the time comes to open it up to other online majors, we'll already know who's interested. If, you're, if you do request these permissions, there's a reasonably good chance that you might get into the class. And in truth, we try to tell you that if, if we feel like you're not going to get into the class, we try to tell you that up front. So if you're thinking about one of these classes, it's good to maybe have a backup class in place and maybe enroll in that other class so that in the future, if you do get into this class, you can drop your backup course and replace it with the course that you prefer. 
you're going to learn more about Ece as you move forward, but I listed all of the Ece courses separately. Um, this will help you to determine which courses are engagement experience HAs, which are U.S. communities HAs, and which are global awareness HAs. Finally, some students enter into UIS still needing some general education courses, so I list the online general education courses here. If you are taking a lower level course, please realize that there are limits to how many lower level courses you can include in a degree, so please talk to me or talk to your 301 instructor before you commit to one of those courses.